So I have entitled this, When, good, when Bad Things Happen to Good Streetcars. And um, I went through, and of course, there's a lot of them. These are all, pretty much all newspaper photos because, you know, if it bleeds, it leads, the old uh, newspaper saying. Um, and so nothing attracted the newspaper photographer with his speed graphic camera faster than a streetcar off the tracks. So as I got into these things, I decided to, to show them kind of from the least awful to the most awful. And um, sometimes they vary from that, but this is it. So we start with derailments. And of course, this isn't actually a derailment, but um, here we are in the bottleneck with uh, the Basilica in the distance. But I guess as we know from experience, this thing probably had to be towed out of there. They couldn't run it out of there under its own power. But at least it was on the track. Been there. Um, and so Done that. as things escalate, here we have one truck off the track, the rear truck. But the front truck is on the track, and the trolley pole is still on the wire. <clears throat> and if both of those things are true, if one truck is still on the track and the trolley pole is on the wire, you got a little more to work with because the car can help itself to a degree. So this is the corner of Fifth and Robert in downtown St. Paul, disrupting things. And uh, I have several examples of that. Here's another one. This is out of Fort Snelling. But once again, poles on the wire. Here we are down on West 7th Street, down by Highland Park. Now here the pole no longer is on the wire and I'm not, I don't think you can get it on the wire. So things are getting uh, incrementally worse. This one, the pole is on the wire, but you'll notice that because the car is this far off, the wheels are not entirely in contact with the track. So care must be taken. Uh, here we are right over at 44th and Beard. This is the building with turtle bread in it. And it's a little bit more difficult because we're not on pavement here. So you got to get this thing up and over the rail. And you can see somebody has been, is, is either attempting to do some kind of towing. Um, by the way, a, when I published this photo, I wound up getting an email from a guy and he said, I'm one of the kids in the photo. Can I get a copy of this? Huh. And so of course, snow adds to the difficulty factor. Here's the service truck trying to figure out what to do. And this would have gotten worse, only the telephone pole stopped it. And we've got a couple of views here. This is over on Como Avenue. You could probably, you might be able to get the pole on the wire here. It's, it's a little unclear. These things do seem to draw a crowd. Here's the same one viewed from the other direction. Now, things get really difficult when both trucks are off the track. And somehow this car has gotten crosswise in the street. This is over at Thomas and St. Albans in Frogtown. Wow. This car has done a 180. And it's kind of interesting to know how that ever happened. But you can see it's got a Glenwood sign. It was headed north and it completely came off and spun around. Look at the position of that front truck. It's 90 degrees to the, to the car. Both of them are. Both yeah. of them. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Um, once again, uh, in snow, not making it any easier. And this one is really, uh, clearly it was, it was gonna try to take the Y and that just didn't work. Now, the degree of difficulty gets even more when the thing is tilted over. This is the curve on the north side of the farm campus on the inner campus line. By the way, this car, uh, there were, I think, three of these, 1146 through 1148 or nine, I forget which. And these were um, Minnetonka high speeds that um, these were the last Minnetonka high speeds in the system, and they were reassigned to the intercampus lines. They lost their marker lamps, they lost their cow catchers, and they got smaller motors. And they ran them there until 1941 and scrapped them. And 
this car is the last car in the system or these cars are the last car in the system to have their Baker heater intact on the front platform. And so they scrapped them just in time for World War II to come along and then they wish they hadn't. I'd like to know have that one. I'd like to know how the photographer got so high. Was there another car that he got on top of or did he carry a ladder with him? No, there's almost certainly a, another car he's standing on. And by the way, th these are crop marks. This was kind of standard mm -hmm. newspaper policy to put crop marks on these. Okay, okay, so now we're gonna go a step further, which is not only are we getting completely off the track, but we're running into stuff and destroying it. <laughs> and here's another example. This is on the South St. Paul line. Here's also another convention, little, little very badly done outlining of stuff uh, to enhance the photograph, sort of. <laughs> and then things get even worse when you run into a building. <laughs> oh. um, and then we get into collisions as opposed to derailments. And this is the sort of thing the company did not like because its own streetcar hit its other own streetcar. So there wasn't anyone to sue. This is a Rice and Como. Clearly somebody has misjudged the situation. Somebody must be derailed in the process. Or no, possibly. actually they're both on the track. It's just that they're both tilted. And so it's an interesting question as to how you get out of this situation. Or into. Yeah, that too. Yeah. Now here's good. one where it's bumped up, but it's bumped up That's against severe. the other car because it derailed. Uh, severe. Will you, will you go down to our school? And then of course, uh, there were uh, rear enders. And this is the rear ender, I wrote this one up. This is at Cottage City, you can see the Cottage City Bridge. And this was a freaky one because there was a big storm and there were selective power failures. And so the power um, south of here, like down by our depot was on, but the power had gone off under the Berry Bridge. And so the car under the Berry Bridge is sitting there in the dark, no lights and no power, but this other car has power and comes zooming along and bang. Oh, shit. And of course, we always love this, streetcar eats car. Um, there were just innumerable uh, car on uh, streetcar accidents. I mean, they were happening multiple times daily. And uh, so we have in the collection a whole bunch of claims department photos where they this just went out to record the damage at Snelling Shops. <clears throat> so, I mean, we've got dozens of these things. So here's just a tiny selection gates all banged up. By the way, um, Patrick uh, Debonet wanted to know where the license plate was in the streetcar. And this is kind of a rare view. That's where they put the license plate up above the rear door. And here's one. This is one of the suburban cars um, with its Baker heater. And uh, you can see the pilot is bent. There's a gouge in the side. The windows are broken because, of course, it's window glass, folks. It's not safety glass. And one of the problems when they would hit something is that you would get flying glass and flying wood splinters. So it was kind of dangerous. That, uh, that headlight on that car looks a lot like the one we have on 1239. Uh, yeah, Bill. And... You know, you said, oh, it sticks out above the bumper. Well, I don't know, maybe it does. They do have, no, no, that's right. This little thing in the front would protect it, sort of. Yeah. If we could put about an inch uh, uh, shim behind that bumper, it would protect that light. So then you start running into bigger stuff. I think you've seen this picture Oops. before of uh, KOing the fire truck at 44th and uh, Bryant in Minneapolis, mm. or tangling with uh, a semi. That's and, the first uh, impact that's almost fair. 
yeah carrying animals it looks like yeah black truck russ olson yeah. said he lived nearby and he actually went over and saw the aftermath of this now here's another semi Ooh. but there's a point at which it becomes unfair and that's when you hit one of these <laughs> So this is right. Fish. So this was right down by Minnehaha Park, and this happened more than once, because uh, here's the aftermath of the second one, Ooh. where it got t-boned. Ouch! Wow. And let's see. Um, don't know quite what happened, but uh, it's not good. Hey, Aaron, in the previous photo to that, uh, the, the one before this one, the emergency car is over on the right-hand side. Right. The emergency truck is there. This is one of the sand cars. I think it just happened to be there. I don't know. Ah. And there's no, there's no protection for a stalled car on the railroad tracks, I suppose, because that line was used relatively infrequently. No, no. This is the main line to Fort Snelling. This is not the stub into Minnehaha Park. That stub diverges back behind the camera. How do they get the overhead wire high enough to clear the locomotive and the train cars? Uh, I guess they just did. Um, because you see this everywhere. Um, I don't think locomotives a, were much taller than streetcars, actually. They're... They they were, but, uh, but the wires were high enough. I mean, mm -hmm. that's... That's an interesting question as to how high they were required to have them, if it was higher than it was normally was. Good question. Uh, here's here's a head on out of the Stillwater line. And this wow. is on the Stillwater line and this car is rolled. Yeah. And Jackson cribbing. There's a pretty good view of a Baker heater too. This is a really terrible one. This is actually a little, uh, this is half a mile south of where the train hit the car. And one car derailed. And then it was unlucky that another car was coming right along. So, I mean, I think uh, this one on the left uh, derailed and wound up going into the path of this one. And here's the aftermath of that. Wow. wow. Luckily, the Pepsi-Cola sign survived. <laughs> <laughs> For the most part. Please, no unnecessary conversations with the operator. <laughs> like, what were you thinking? <laughs> now, this is the worst one of all. And on the Montemedi line out to Hazel Park, where they went and crossed over the Omaha Railroad, it, it narrowed down to Gauntlet Track, the overlapping track. And <clears throat> I think they didn't have a signal there. And of course, it was blind coming up to the top. And these two cars just happened to hit, and uh, it was pretty terrible. Wow. Now, this is not a collision. This is down at the loop at 62nd and Nicollet, and this car was flipped by a tornado. Oh. oh. Wow. And then uh, they didn't usually do this, but what it says in the newspaper photo was that uh, a resistor in the car overheated. This is on University Avenue at Lexington. Wow. Now, I've got a couple of bonus photos that I, uh, that are just kind of extra. Um, one of them is this, and, and illustrating graphically why they created the Bullnose Islands. And then Dave French, are you on here? Um, he commented about the automobile that ran through the fence above the uh, top portal of the Selby Tunnel and crashed onto the tracks. And this is photo proof of that. So anyway, that's that's this little presentation.